so good to welcome you once again to our sofa service and also to those of you who might be joining us for the first time uh, on your sofa so wherever you are whoever you are you are most welcome we're also really excited uh, <laughs> today because we have received the most wonderful welcome uh, Jane and Nick uh, are welcoming the whole of the church family of Harbour Churches to gather in the field at Redlands for worship in the field next Sunday, 5th of June. As lockdown eases, so we're exploring how we can be the church together, praising God and living out our lives in ways that bring in his kingdom of justice, mercy and of peace. The details you will be able to find on the website, also through the newsletter, uh, any questions just give us a call uh, yes. it should be um well it'll be a first so <laughs> you know things may happen that we didn't quite plan for it's um, sort of proms in the park but with god uh, and, and, and a touch of glastonbury <laughs> if it rains Maybe a bit of uh, but the, the, the forecast is actually really good for several sundays to come so pray for yeah. the weather too there will it's be there will be wet weather options as well yeah well, I think in the excitement, we mustn't forget our prayers this morning. So we'll, we'll move on to the collect. Ever living God, you have broken the tyranny of sin and you have sent the spirit of your son into our hearts, whereby we call you Father. Give us grace to dedicate our freedom to your service that we in all creation may be brought to the glorious liberty of the children of God. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, 
who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Well, our Bible reading today uh, could not be more appropriate. It is from Matthew, uh, chapter 10, verses 40 to 42. And it's beautiful. Whoever welcomes you, welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me, welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, None of these will lose their reward. I'm just going to invite you now to, to pause and as we have heard God's living word and that message of welcome, of gospel hospitality, let's reflect on a time in our lives when we have received welcome where someone has opened up to us and invited us in there may be a significant moment of welcome that you can recall or maybe there's a need for you, for us, to spend more time in being attentive to the many welcomes we surely receive. So, Jonathan, Tell us if you've had one mm. of those moments of welcome you just spoke of, <clears throat> a, a moment when mm. perhaps it was a surprise or you weren't expecting mm. it, mm. But something that's resonated with you. Mm. Mm. Well, I've been thinking about uh, being welcomed and welcoming this past week. Uh, one moment that was really quite special uh, was when uh, my friend and I, Damien, were backpacking uh, around Europe after our A-levels and we found ourselves having to leave Athens rather quickly due to um, an altercation with, uh, uh, with the police and not having a work permit, but that's another story. Um, and so we headed off to, uh, and I want to use the phrase God forsaken, it surely was not, but it looked it. We went to find some work and we were given an address where we could go and find some work. It was an agricultural area, huge numbers of, of, of greenhouses and uh, and clearly a, a place where, where there wasn't much holiday making going on. And we were walking down this, uh, this dusty track, and it was dusty, and we were, yeah, we were feeling very insecure and a little bit confused, and we weren't quite sure where we were. Uh, and as we walked down this track, we heard some noise from one of the farm buildings, and as we got close up to the farm building, um, we saw that inside there was some kind of party. Because as it turned out, it wasn't a party. It was actually a wedding reception. And we just lingered for a few moments by this, this barn and, and, and looked in. And as we looked in, the door opened and we were invited in. Mm. Now we had our backpacks on. We probably hadn't showered in a couple of days. We weren't looking at our best. And we were just two young English lads in the middle of somewhere in Greece. And yet they welcomed us in. And more than that, <laughs> can't believe they did this. We were invited to sit at the top table with the bride and with the groom. 
They brought chairs and sat us down, and they brought us food and drink. We were Eisterland terribly English, and I was incredibly embarrassed, as I think was my friend Amy. But it was such an amazing mm, welcome. Phenomenal. An amazing welcome. I think looking back, it was part of what they really felt they must do on this, the day of their greatest joy and greatest celebration, a wedding, was to make space for the stranger. Wow. Amazing. Mm. You've never told me that. I mean, I've not known you a long time. You've never shared that story. That's not something to you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that's... Okay. <laughs> Yeah, so um, I've had some experiences this week of being a welcomer. Yeah, yeah, and, we have, haven't we? Um, as we reflect on what it means to welcome, um, we we obviously have ongoing parking issues in West Wishing at the moment. It continues. It continues. And um, as I was coming back to our house on one of the very hot days we've had this week, um, I saw a a car, quite a dilapid looking. Di- dilapidated looking car and it was doing one of those fantastic things we've all had an experience of in our lives where you're doing virtually a 17 point turn because you're trying to get into a space that is just too small but there's nowhere else to go so you're desperately trying to fit your car into this space that actually isn't big enough and I felt the pain of these people now inside was a bunch of teenagers I mean they look like teenagers and um Probably not the most welcoming group of people I've ever seen in my life. But um, anyway, I went up to the window and I just said, I've got a space on my drive. Don't worry about parking here. Turn around and follow me. And they were so shocked that I'd stopped and um, sort of given them this invite. But they were absolutely thrilled. And so they turned the car around. They followed me. And as this happened, someone else who was also trying to now get into the very small space that they hadn't got into just looked at me and just said, is there room for one more? And I said, there is. Come with us. And so we formed this almost like a convoy going down (laughs) Pound Road onto the drive. And... um, The reason I'm sharing this story is because I know that they had a wonderful day because they were able to have their space and they were able to go off and have the day that they'd hoped for at our beautiful beach here. But it was me, it was me that then went on very joyously through the day because it felt like a wonderful thing to have, have done for someone, to have seen the pain and gone, actually... I can, I can do something about this. Just follow me. It was wonderful. Well, yeah, yeah. but you're, you're quite a, a, a nice person. Um, I, I struggle, I have to say. Um, I'm a bloke. I'm quite territorial. Yeah, you um, can be. I quite like to shut the <laughs> gates and shut people out. You know, it's my castle. I'm going to protect it. Um, and I've been challenged these past weeks with, uh, with having this outlook that we as a family have... Uh, together agreed on which is as far as we're able when people come and and they knock on our door and they say you know is it possible may we uh, park on your drive to say within reason yeah we've got some space here we've got some space there but it's not easy I guess like so many people when I'm invited, asked to be a person of welcome. My thoughts, my heart goes to that place of vulnerability. For some reason, I see that unknown person as a threat. Maybe that's wise. Maybe we should be cautious and careful who we're welcoming in. But I think the welcome that we hear in today's gospel and indeed the welcome that is so much at the heart of the Jesus way. It is a welcome that not only asks but maybe insists that we have to be the one who takes a risk to open up our homes, our lives, ourselves indeed, to the other and most especially to the other who is unknown. 
Paul when writing to the church in Rome, a church, by the way, that had its own issues, was a church characterised by a fearfulness. It was suffering persecution. It was a small church right at the very centre of Roman imperial power. And it would be wise for members of that church to be suspicious of who they welcomed. We know that the Christian community, small though they were, uh, had been brought to the attention of the authorities and they were quite happy to send people to spy on them, to find out just what was going on. But Paul wrote this in chapter 15 of his letter to that small and fearful church, saying, Therefore welcome one another as Christ has welcomed you for the glory of God. You know, the greatest act of hospitality, of welcome, of giving space, really is what God has done for us in Christ. How he gave up himself in Christ for us and opened the way that we can, as we heard in the gospel, share in that glorious liberty of the children of God. The founder of Western monasticism, St. Benedict, he, he wrote a rule for his monks, a, a way they should live together and a way that they were to live, not only in relation to each other in community, but also looking out beyond themselves to the world in which they found themselves. And there's a wonderful rule, it's rule 53, I don't know how many there are, but it's rule 53. And Benedict says this, For he, Jesus, will say, I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I think there's a passage in Hebrews that says that when we welcome strangers, we often welcome angels unawares. In this kingdom season, and as so many of us have been through a time of being locked down, I would hope and pray that as a church coming out of lockdown, we're going to seize the opportunity to live out that welcome, that hospitality. Hopefully it'll be a real encouragement to us next Sunday to be able to be together and to welcome each other as a church family, to reconnect and to restore relationships. That's going to be something that we're certainly going to look forward to. And do please feel you can extend a wider invitation, welcome others to share together as we worship in the field. But I know, uh, and I speak for myself, um, as not only a vicar, but as someone who tries to, to live a Christian life, how difficult I find it to be at times, to be the one who, who kind of knocks on doors, that one who is able to tell people the good news of Jesus. Well, if, like me, you're not a very good knocker on doors, um, there is another way. Another way which really does proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ. And does it in a way which another great founder of religious communities, another great saint, St Francis, he said, you know, preach the gospel and use words if you have to. This is a way to make the good news known without words. And that's simply not to worry about knocking on someone else's door but do a little bit more to be able to open up your door. Because that welcome that we give, goodness me, it so commends, so celebrates the fullness of life that we share in Christ Jesus. I'm reminded again of that very simple phrase from that monk, Harry Williams. 
and talked about the goal of human living is creative goodness. And when we make that welcome, who knows what wonderful knock-on effects there may be. I was surprised because, uh, again, I was on my own in the rectory and busy and I'd shut the gate because I just shut the gate. And then someone came and ran at the door and they said, oh, is it possible that we could park on your drive? And I thought, right, I know if I say no, I'll get told off by the kids and Jane. So I said, yes, of course it is. Do please park there. This huge, great, big BMW urban tank. All singing, all dancing. <sighs> Do I suffer from jealousy? I don't know. But it's a car <laughs> that will never afford. No, we'll never afford one. <laughs> yeah. Brand new. And I thought in my heart, do you really need this welcome? You're not that needy family I'd like to welcome, all those muddled teenagers. But I just said, yeah, come and park. Anyway, I got on with my day, they got on with theirs. Uh, and I saw though, on the doormat in the porch, toward the end of the day, a piece of paper folded up. On the front, you probably can't see it. Turn it there we are, it's a little heart shape. I opened it up, and this is what it said. This is the second gospel reading for the day. To a very, to us, nice person, thank you for letting us to park to let me enjoy my birthday. I am eight today. From Elaria Kabir. Who was to know that there was a little girl who was going to celebrate her birthday at the beach and had nowhere to park? big car or small car, rich or poor. The welcome that we can offer is so transformative. It is in ways that we'll never understand. The working out of God's mission that we can be together, a people who bring to other people a fullness of life. It is, and I'm very happy to repeat myself, the best way to commend the love of God in Christ Jesus. Jane, would you like to lead us in prayer? Just gather our reflections and our thoughts in response to John's word today. Close our eyes. Make sure we're comfortable. Become aware of the silence around us and calling to God, to call for God's presence. We can say the words, Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, come. We ask God to help us be a community of welcome. Help us open our hearts and our minds. Help us live as welcoming people. And as we do so, help that welcome spread throughout the whole world. 
Let the ripple be love, God's love for all his people. As we gather in prayer, we give thanks for the food and the rice that is now going out to the communities in Bow. Give thanks for Bruce and for Jerry for raising our awareness of the plight of the people in Sierra Leone as they themselves cope with the effects of the coronavirus on their economy. We give thanks that we have been able to be part of the giving there. We pray that that will continue. As we turn our eyes onto the world today, especially today, that we just bring before you the Yemen, God. We bring before you the Yemen that is so broken, so war-torn, the people are starving without much hope and we pray that somehow, somewhere, there will be peace. That there will be a call to lay down the weapons. And that hope will come. We pray for our gathering next Sunday in the field. We pray that it will be a place of encouragement and of joy and of sharing and that that sharing and that encouragement and that joy will ripple out into the community. We pray for all those suffering today with ill health Pray those suffering from emotional exhaustion, from mental health problems, from addictions. We pray that help and support will come for them. We hold before you all those known personally to us who need your love and who need your care and encouragement. And we're asked to pray by name for Derek, for Clive, for Prue, for Judy, for Judith, for Derek. And for those who have died in recent days, and for those who are grieving at this time. And we give thanks for the lives of Anne Harrington and Tracy Charlesworth. And we gather up these and all our prayers in the words that Jesus gave us to say as together we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Well, we're going to end our time of togetherness today with a wonderful song. It's a song that we just literally discovered this morning as we were looking through, trying to find um, what would work for our service today. And um, it's a song sung by Stuart, Stuart Townend. Um, 
as as you listen, um, what I see, what I saw as I heard it this morning, I, I could see all of us, <laughs> um, every different person, every age group, every colour, every creed, and I just had this vision of all of us walking to that field and gathering together. And um, the song is all about gathering and gathering up. And, and, and extending the welcome that God extends to us. Yeah. You know, God delights in who we are. Yeah. And if we can hold on to that, then we can be about the amazing business, the great work of welcoming others as in this song, yeah. Stuart Townend. Stuart singing. And reminds please us. just really listen to, to those words. I'm sure I heard myself in them. Jonathan definitely heard himself. Yeah. And I'm sure you will recognise yourself in one of the one of the people being called in the song. So we'll leave you with this. And uh, hopefully we'll see you next Sunday at 10 o'clock at the field in Redlands. And do call, do shout out if, if you want more details or you need to know how to get there or maybe there's a transport issue. We're, we're working really hard to make sure Absolutely. it yeah, runs yeah. as smoothly but, as possible. But I think we also need to say that we're continuing as lockdown eases with virtual church. Mm -hmm. So uh, we have uh, a meditation this Wednesday. We're looking forward to welcoming uh, Mark Rafe and to hear of his experiences through lockdown. Uh, and we'll continue our sofa services too, mm. so they'll be available uh, to you on the, the YouTube channel. Yeah. And uh, we're very grateful again for all your words of support and encouragement. They do mean a tremendous amount to us. Before Vagabonds, though, let's remember that we are still together in the God who loves us as Father, Son and Holy Spirit. So let's say the grace together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the, the love, love of God, God and the, the fellowship, fellowship of the Holy Spirit, Spirit be, be with, with us all evermore. Amen. Amen. I think we've lost the connection with our, um, <laughs> our sandbox, the wonders of technology. I'm just going to wait for our speaker to load up for us. Here we go. I think it's on. So hopefully this time when I press play, you will actually hear something. Let's try again. Here we go.
Thank you.